to uh, go on to the next segment of and next part of the evening. This is actually going to be a part where you get to exercise your smiles and your laughs and exercise your ribs. We are going to have a comedian. So please um, we'll have a round of applause for Munashe the comedian. Control of. Not none of this nonsense where you just say one day that 15 billion vanished. <laughs> it's, it's a I was trying to talk about that 15 billion, but it hurt me, man. It hurt me. And the way that it just disappeared and no one was held accountable or questioned, it's as if I can imagine the guy who's in charge of the 15 billion just turned up to work one day and his boss was like, yo, ah. Uh, Kusha, 15 billion years, you want to use it? And the guy was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 15 billion, I don't know how you want to use it. I don't know, I don't know. Just like that, I was upset. But this is what I love about my people, my Zimbabweans. We're peaceful and tranquil people. Any other country that went through the stuff we went would have broken up in a civil war and so much civil unrest. But because we're Zimbabweans, we just wake up and we fight. We just wake up like, you know what? Hey, things are hard, but Dola, we need to make this, we need to make, especially our mothers, Zimbabwean mothers. No one grinds and hustles like the Zimbabwean mother. No one. I can tell you, in the 90s, you know when you had the 90s, 2000s, when you had that hustle, the doilies, my doil. Yeah? Mothers used to go from, from Zim, Mauritius, South Africa, Mozambique, selling doilies, doily mats. People went to school and I'm a doily, man. Come on. If that's not hustling, I don't know what hustle is. And then it came around the 2000s. And the mothers in the UK, we had that whole Kupene Samachir when you used to burn that money. Like, you send 50 pounds, you make 100 billion dollars. <laughs> where's my Bully people? My my, my really mothers, where's my Bully mothers? And then you had the Abu Spati Lady. Hey! You know? Cash converters on the road. Hustles, hustles. I love Zimbabweans. Uh, the three types of Zimbabweans, I've noticed. Three categories. It's either you're a devout Christian, you're a church lover, you go to church, you love your Bible, or you love your beer. <laughs> or you're both. <laughs> no middle ground. <laughs> Literally. You've been at the beer hall and you've got down, question, question, he's drunk and he's like, ah, I need to go home. He's like, hey, have another one, man, have another one. He's like, hey, hey, I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> You will turn the fucking on, you're like, I don't know if you're going to be able to I'm a, um, I was born and raised Methodist. So, John Wesley. Yeah, the ones with the uniform that looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> Ma Wee City, where's my Ma Wee City? Yeah? Mm-hmm. What's in that white one? I don't know what's in that one. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah,
know that in our services, we don't use electrical instruments. We use the drum, goma. We use the horn, gosho. We use our hands, we clap. And we use washer. I'm just going to washer what's in English. I don't know. What's washer in English? What's washer in English? Shakes, what? Shakers. Shakers, okay. Shakers. I'm not like it. That's very convenient. Shakers. Yeah. So, the first time I went to a Pentecostal church, this is how things work in my church. You go to church, one guy up there, he preaches, and if it's prayer time, he prays for everyone, everyone close their eyes, this guy prays. If you want to pray in your heart, you pray in your heart quietly. One guy prays. So now my first Pentecostal church service, I rock up, mm. And then they start, you know, the praise. They start with the praise and they've got guitars and they've got keyboards. And I was like, yo, this is kind of fun. Yeah, they say, oh, I'm trying to think of one or two of my head. Uh, one praise song, praise song, praise song. Everything I double. Everything I double. double. Yeah. I'm like, yo, DJ, DJ, wow. <laughs> DJ, I'm to jump some. Yeah? And then everyone, they start praying. I'm like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And then all of a sudden, people start praying one by one. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what is this? What is this? You know how it is when people start praying slowly after that worship and everyone uh, it starts with a little more <laughs> and Firm, but I, I like it. 
It's good, it's small thing. But the problem is, you guys, you're not affectionate. You don't express your love to us. You know? Do you have a son, sir? Are you Zimbabwe? Two. How often do you tell your sons you love them? Not that often. Not that often. <laughs> it's not, no, no, no. The, the door, no, it's not, listen, it's just a cultural thing. I know he loves his children. I know he does. I know my father loves me, but he's, he's never told me that he loves me. I know he loves me. I know he loves me. I'm not saying he doesn't love me. I know he loves me, but he's never told me he loves me. I've been counting on one hand the amount of times my father has told me he loves me. One hand. One hand. Two fingers. Two fingers. Like, my father's one of those guys. Let me just tell you, my father's one of those guys from old school. Yeah, this, like most of the old school African does that grew up in a time where the only way out was education and my dad hit the books. He hit the books like nothing. Yeah, got degrees like the NVQs for the fun. <laughs> <laughs> and as a result, he loves to use unnecessarily big words. <laughs> Why don't you use such big words? Just talk to me normally. For example, when I used to go to school, boarding school, out to plant tree. When I was in school, you know, when it gets to exit uh, weekend, fix your free weekend, you call my dad, be like, ah, dad, uh, it's an exit weekend, um, can you come pick us up? Are you going to be around? Blah, 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 blah. Instead of this guy just saying, no, I'm out of town, I'm on a business trip, I'll send you money for the school bus, or I'll try to get someone from the office to come pick you up, this is what he said. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, due to my uh, occupational uh, commitments, I'm uh, going to uh, uh, plans uh, of a gargantuan scale, so uh, it makes me rather sanguine to tell you that uh, I am unable to uh, meet your requirements. <laughs> and every time you give me the talk, it's only up to now. Things that my dad, the advice my dad's given me when I was like 14, 15, has only started to make sense now. <laughs> now. Because you know you get to that age where you get that talk. You know, that talk about the burden of the bees, women, uh, pregnancy, work, 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 work. This was my dad's version of that talk. Reading the newspaper. Like, well, if you plant seeds, they'll germinate. <laughs> but after like two, three months, I'm in my bedroom. Like, oh, oh, right. <laughs> but this guy is—he he talks like Rafiki from The Lion King. <laughs> After a conversation, talking to him, I'm talking, nah, you know, dad, yeah, you know, I left my biomedical science course, I decided to be an Indian, blah, 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 you know, yeah, 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 this and that. He's like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, slowly you catch the monkey. And pff, I'm just like, you know. <laughs> At the end of the conversation, I decided, maybe I'm the one who's never said I love you. So maybe if I initiate it, he'd respond. So the end of the phone call, I'm like, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> I would enter to you. Okay, I love you. And he was like, ah, uh, well, uh. <laughs> uh, you're gripping me. Uh, <laughs> well, perhaps I could just do 